Renee, welcome back. This is Real Talk with Jay Renee. And I am so glad that you decided to tune in with me here on SSC Live TV. Um, and hey, again, here I go doing one on relationship today. Oh my goodness. Uh, hey, hey, listen. Now this might be phenomenal. It might not be, but I, I in particularly enjoy the revelation that I received on this topic because it is, it, it, it still connects. It still connects uh, with everything that we've been talking about. And so um, I am, I, I just pray you get into this with me. So, so when we, you know what? So when we talk about relationship, and I thought about this, and most, so let me, can I just be honest? Can I be honest with you? All right, so let me be honest with you. When I, um, I don't know, I want to say was kind of on the back end of my marriage, you know, and the Lord was dealing with me on writing a book. And I was like, uh -huh. okay, for real? Like, my marriage is failing and you want me to write a book? Uh -huh. It's cracking up. Like, okay. But then you know what? He wouldn't let me go. He, would, he, he, was, he was saying things to me about relationship that I, I've never heard. And so I'm, go I'm going to give this to you because you know what? If we can look at how uh, we fit in relationship, Right, and even taking um, the topic that we've gone through, and know that we we brought top those topics, those those uh, experiences into our marriage. People don't just you know marry you; they marry your past, they marry uh, your culture, they marry all of that. Right, and you know what I've noticed about marriage, and 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 predominantly uh, all the people that I ask or get in conversations with, you know, because I really love that. I am a talker. I don't know. Maybe you can tell. But we talk about relationship. And here's the funny thing. Men believe this about women for relationship. Women believe this about men for relationship, right? And those beliefs sometimes, a lot of the time, cause us problems if I were to just be straight up honest about it, right? But there's a reason why I am going from this point of view. And that is, so if I were to say, okay, you know, if you were to get married, what would you be looking for? Well, I want a woman that can cook, clean the house, and do all this so that you can do what? Okay, so you're like, well, that's what she's supposed to do. And then a woman will say, well, depending on who is uh, saying to her, well, you, you are supposed to, you are supposed to uh, clean the house and wait on him hand and foot. In whose book? Yours? <laughs> okay. Boy, and I know don't, you're going to try to take me to the Bible on this, aren't you? You go right ahead. So let me just say, we are people who are made up differently, but I bet you if I say, uh, it, you know, Anything about marriage, it is always about what you can get. What can I get from a relationship? Oh, well, I want a man so he can help me pay these bills and take out the trash. You're just talking about getting something. Oh, I want a woman so I ain't got to worry about cleaning up. You're talking about getting something. And every time we talk about relationship, it's always about what we get or what we can get and if this person can't get or I can't get that from this person then I need to go on to the next because they ain't the right one ah you know or if you are not in a marriage but you're in a relationship it's all about sometimes and this can go either way now but the one person wants to get sex all the time and one person wants to get companionship. All about what I can get. But the funny thing is that when we are in Christ, we are a new creature. And we should model after God. And God is not looking at what he can get. As a matter of fact, God has given. So what does that look like? 
And so, and I remember the Lord sharing this with me, and I'm going to just share it with you just the way I got it. And, and it's this, he said, what if two people came into a relationship about what they can give? And I mean, not giving in a way uh, to kind of outgive somebody. You know, I don't, I mean, if you think of it like that, but not so much till you are unsatisfied. I'm really giving, giving, giving so I can get something, whether I say it or not. But ultimately, it's about what you're getting. Ooh. Whew. I don't know what kind of text messages or emails I'm going to get from this one, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and lay it out there anyway. Real talk. So we're always thinking, well, I can... So, you know, one day I'm having a conversation with an old friend of mine, right? And we were not in this conversation talking about one another. But we both kind of got the revelation together, right? You know, so, and, and so here, here's my thing. I, can I, all right. I'm, I'm going to speak for me on this one, and I pray that you can relate, right? So... I have given my life to Christ. And when I say that, I mean my life. Whatever in ministry or wherever he wants to take me, that's where I want to go. I don't want to be in a situation ever again where I feel like I have to back up on my calling or stop because I'm making another person uncomfortable. I don't want to be hindered in what I give to Christ. However, I want to be a person able to give. So... Can I do both? I, I believe that God would never, being that I put God first, would put me into a relationship where or or reveal to me um, what kind of a person this is. So guess what? I'm, I'm not going to marry an unbeliever. Why? Because I already know, regardless of what they say, I already know that we're going we're gonna to believe something different down the line. So it might be okay today. Until you say, I do, then everything changes. Oh my gosh, how many times has that happened, right? It always turns back into what they can get or they're not getting enough. So when we always purpose to give, give, give. You know what? I would love to come home, clean up, cook dinner for when you get there. Why? Because that pleases you, right? But when I can't, <laughs> when I can't. Are you going to fall out and have a fit about it? You know, and then so my friend was like, you know what? I love cooking too, right? And I don't ever mind walking in and, and having to be the cook. I was like, okay, and we was going back and forth. And then we just thought, man, because both of us began to see in, rep in representation, I believe that's how God wanted this thing. So when God... Uh, brings us into relationship, our relationship with one another should look like our relationship with him. So that brings me to this. Are you ready? Okay, good. So glad you're ready. Because um, are we in relationship with God to get blessings all the time? Oh, what can I get? I need to get a job. I need a car. I need this. I need that. And when it doesn't happen, what happens? God doesn't love. I don't know, I've done something. You automatically think you've done something wrong with God because you're not getting something. <laughs> Glory to God. Can I just bless his name because he's God? Can I, just, can I just get into his presence just because he's God? Can I just worship because he's God? Oh, no, not on Sunday. But can I just get up this morning and bless his name? Can I, does that sound religious? But... Is it still religious when you actually experience his presence? Because just as much as you want to give to God, God wants to give more to you. <laughs> okay, okay. But we can't, so our model, our model for that is, what is our relationship like with God? What is our relationship like in our relationship? Well, number one, okay, we have to be healed from the things that stop us from trusting enough to give. Because 
when we have been abused or misused or gone through, it's hard for us to trust again. And it takes a whole lot of effort to love again, especially if you've been divorced um, or maybe you are in the middle of grief because you, you've uh, had to uh, part with a spouse. You know, like your spouse has, has gone on uh, and to be with the Lord or your spouse has died or however you want to say that. But when you have um, parted with someone or, or uh, left someone and it brings a lot of pain, it, it can be hard to love again. Understandable. Understandable. Not taking nothing away from that. But do you stop living altogether? Do you crowd your life with other things? Just so, so I'm talking about relationships. Okay. I, I'm talking about, you know, people sometimes they bottle up because they don't want to give. <laughs> but giving is a part of living. And believe it or not, as much as you think that getting is living, giving is what frees us, right? It is what frees us to be us. It is what frees us to be happy. A mentality to give is saying, I, you know, but guess what? Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me put a pen right there. Because giving has to be two ways. So important that, you know, like, oh, this frustrates me to no end because, you know, if you are in the church and, you know, there's this one person teaching that this is how your life has to be. And I've known so many of my different friends, good friends, who have, they've been in marriages where, you know what, uh, the man loves to clean. I mean, like, loves to clean. But when you put a category on a woman said, no, you're the one that must clean. But you know what? Never had to clean their own room or anything else because somebody always did it for them. They're not going to be that person that knows how to clean very well. I mean, but over the years. So check this out. I give, I give. And where I fall short, what happens there? Well, is that an area that y'all can agree on growing together? Oh, did we forget about that? Because we're becoming one. In a relationship, people become one. In a marital relationship. So, <clears throat> you're going to get me for this. So when we jump into sex, and we don't even know the person that well, then we have made union with someone that it may not even work out with because you might be a give, giver and they're a getter. And it's, it's just not gonna work out because, because can I tell you why? Because it's never enough. When, you, when all you ever do is wanting to get, you fall into this thing where it's never enough. It's never enough. And when someone gives all that they have and all that they are, and it's not enough. You know, whenever, you know, uh, one spouse wants to cheat because, oh, he's so nice. He don't ever do this. He never raises his voice. He never argues. He never cusses me out. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want that. But I, I have seen this on Facebook. I have seen this where women have wanted to go sleep around because this person was, or wait, or wait, the most famous one, you know, well, he beats me, a getter, or he's got issues. Hey, I'll be right back. It's a celebration. The deal maker, Kevin Willis, is celebrating 10 years, a decade of servicing our community with Deals on Wheels at Toyota of Louisville, 6514 Dixie Highway. He's the number one high volume car dealer. Call him today so he can create you a deal of a lifetime at 502-408-0888. 10 years, Kevin Willis at Toyota of Louisville. 10 years of finding you deals, of getting you done. That's Kevin Willis, the deal maker with Toyota of Louisville. 
6514 Dixie Highway. Be sure to check out the deal maker on social media. Friend him on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter. It's the deal maker, Kevin Willis, at Toyota of Louisville. Okay, I am back. I am back. So, I, I you know what? I, I am glad that you are still with me. So, I, I wanted to take this. I was trying to show you how um, the giver and someone who, who beats you, who, you know, that also is a reason why we fall out. You know, important, important to know somebody before you really sleep with them. Okay, you might have been with them, you know, two years or whatever, but what is it that you really know? Are they going to commit for the long run? Or, you know, it, you don't want to get caught in a place that is dangerous for you to get out of, right? So there's those two large scenarios. But so let's look at this. And I'm going I'm to show you how, um, where, uh, in, the, in the scripture, right? So we're going to go to John 3, John chapter 3. Um, and I'm going to start at verse 16 because I want to show you how God gives. God gives, God gives, God gives. And having that in mind, you want your relationship to be built in God and with God so that when you do decide to get in a relationship with another believer, right? And I mean, come on, this is why we talk about equally yoked. Someone who has, who has built their life to model after Christ, which means a giver, 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 giver. Beautiful. Okay. So John 3, um, and I'm going to go to verse 16. Well, watch this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. God so loved the world. He gave. He gave. He didn't just give anything. He gave his most precious. He gave himself. He gave him son. So his son. So he gave himself through his son, right? He gave. He gave. So watch this. Let me go on to verse 17. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Saved, right? So he's giving salvation through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Okay. Watch this. So, um, given, watch this, going to John, uh, the next chapter over, uh, chapter 4. Watch this. Verse 23. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father's Seek such as these to worship him. These people are givers. Worship him. They're givers because when I come, I'm going to give. I'm giving you myself and I'm looking for people giving to me. So those that have a heart to give, Lord, I want to give you worship. Right? Because it's a sign. Look, the spirit, worship in spirit and in truth. So when we become spiritual beings, we become like God. So we become givers. We become givers. And so I don't, you know, you have to know that God is giving you of himself and you're giving him of yourself. You're giving God you, and God's giving you him. Giving, giving. All right. That might be a little difficult to see. So, <laughs> but both are giving. And it's a union that is eternal. Eternal. Right? Just, can I just say this? You don't, again, you don't lose in giving, you gain. Okay, just want you to hold on to that. 
the father is seeking. Let me do this. Let me go down to verse 34, chapter, chapter 4, John. I mean, I jump around this, but let me tell you, because it, is, it has so much, and I, and I love this. Jesus said to them, um, to the disciples, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. It is Jesus' desire to do the will of the Father. I am giving the Father what? A harvest. I am doing his will. I'm completing the work. In other words, I am completing something that is what we were designed for. Right? So in other words, God is working this thing where we're benefiting from our giving. He's benefiting from his giving. We're getting eternal life. We're getting eternal fellowship with the Father. I don't ever want to be out of his presence. And once you have experienced the presence of the living God, you won't ever want to be out of his presence. Like, nothing else really matters. So when you are a giver, right, your family benefits. What? Yes, your family benefits. And our life and our relationship, building our relationship with God, makes us givers, which really, listen, that's, that's why we don't really see the effects of God in our life because we are still on the getting edge and not the giving edge. You know, oh my goodness, I am going to say it, here we go. Giving, giving your tithes, giving offerings, giving to the building up of the kingdom. I'm not giving that man my money. What man are you talking about? Jesus? I'm just saying. Right? Because it takes money. But an attitude of giving, whether it's a dollar, ten cent, a hundred dollars, ten dollars, see, it's not the amount, it's the attitude. It's the heart. Are you a giver? Get it. Well, uh, I pay all this, I give all this. So I should be able to get something from my church. My church should be able to give me this or get, I am getting something. I'm only giving to get. All right, I'm just keeping it real. Listen, nobody paid me to say this. This is, look, this is me coming out, volunteering myself to say these words because of what God has given me. So I'm giving to you what God has given me. You're welcome. Okay, so check this out. 34, so guess what? Jesus goes and says, he said, he's talking about in 36, the reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. In other words, let's work this thing so that those who are sowing can celebrate with those who are reaping. So you who sow into the church should be celebrating with those who are reaping from the sower. Come on. Giving. Giving. I'm giving this. I'm giving this. Right? And it looks like give and take, but when you really look at God's heart, God has put everything on the line. He has put everything on the line for relationship. Ha! Ah. That is sacrifice. That is sacrifice. He's laid all this sacrifice down. And what does he receive? Does he receive complaints about what we don't have? Or does he receive worship because of we given what we have? Because that's what God means to us, is what we give. And if we can turn our relationship around, to give God, to be a giver, to be a, listen to God. I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about time. I'm talking about, so, so worship is not just about singing. Worship is spending time with intentional, intentional time. Not, oh, I don't have to work today, but hey, do I need to get up earlier just to have this time with the Lord? And just because that's just where I want to be. <laughs> I don't know if you can grab hold of that. But God is in a position always to give. 
and he's waiting for us to get in a position to always to give. Then we're ready to enter a relationship with someone who is a giver because you're a giver. And we give not to outgive or not to get something. But you know what? It's a beautiful thing when, okay, I'm going to just use this for an example. You know how you clean the house and it has this fresh smell to it and there's this beautiful aroma. Listen, I love to cook, so that's why I'm saying it's not because I think that's what a wife should do. I just love to cook, okay? I'm just telling you that. May the Lord help me keep my uh, skills, <laughs> but I love to cook. So having to prepare a meal that I know would be beautiful to the person I'm in relationship with, and they come in and smell that and are able to let go of everything they've gone through that day to come in, and guess what? Maybe they'll have uh, something in their hand because, you know what, I saw this today and I thought about you. Maybe it's a card. Maybe it's not like nothing big, but something that says, my mind was on you today. My mind was on you today. You know, just writing something or giving something that shows evidence of I, I am with you when I'm not with you. You know, that kind of relationship. God is with me always. And God, when I'm not in my room on my knees, my mind is with you. I am with you. I am giving you my attention. Even while I'm working, I can give you my attention. I can think on things. Oh, well, I, so even, and I know you're thinking, well, I got to focus on this. Yes, you are. And you're probably doing it to the best of your ability because of the one who's given you that ability to do it. So there's just so many different ways, but we have to focus on a giving perspective and not a getting perspective and you know what try it and see how much better your relationship could be you know both of you sitting there think about what can I give you know you're at a point in life that you you're you're different how can I give in this way to continue to love the way I want to be loved to the way I want to love you know like you want to love someone. How can you give in this time to show your love, your continuous love? How can you do that? Hey, ask the Holy Spirit to help you and to show you. So I've enjoyed being with you this time, but I am running out of time right now. I'm out of time. So guess what? I will see you next time on Real Talk with Minister Jay Renee. Hey, God bless you.